We're well into June and we had a late frost last night. When this happens to you, what can you do to protect your plants? Hi, I'm Jonathan, the Provident Prepper. Sometimes the weather's wacky and a bit unpredictable. For example, last week we were having record hot temperatures and then the last three nights we've had frost warnings and frost. How do you protect your plants? In this video, we will talk about some of the things you can do to help protect your plants. Stay tuned. The weather report says frost is coming tonight. How do you save the garden? Weather reports in our area tend to be a little bit unreliable. About a month ago, we had these little tomatillos that were healthy and strong and we thought we were all good. And then we had a weather report that said it was going to be 36, 38 degrees and we thought we were okay. But in the morning, we discovered that a lot of our crops had some frost damage. So we are very careful not to rely on the weather reports. And then a week ago, all of a sudden we started watching the weather and we had these days coming up where on Sunday it was going to be 36, on Monday 34, and the closer we got, those temperatures kept dropping. I posted on a group Facebook page and asked some of our neighbors if they were going to cover their crops, and overwhelmingly the reply was yes. So we had to get to work. Obviously the goal here is to protect the harvest. If we lose the plants now, it's going to take a long time before they're going to be able to get back up and running and provide us with food. If they're able to at all. We have a short growing season and if we get too late of a start, there just isn't enough time for those plants to produce food to harvest. My dream is to own a greenhouse, but even if we had a greenhouse, it wouldn't help us in this situation because you're going to want to plant your tomatoes and your peppers and your squash and your melons out in the garden. And if you get a late frost, those need to be covered to be protected. I think it's important to understand which plants need protection at this stage. There are some plants that are much more sensitive to frost than others, like your tomatoes, peppers, melons, squash, cucumbers, those things that if it falls to 32 degrees, they are going to be either killed or damaged. However, those same temperatures aren't going to phase plants like peas, beets, carrots, spinach, cabbage, and onions. We didn't have to cover any of those cold weather crops, only the warm weather crops that were sensitive to frost. Those lists aren't complete, but just an example of some of the kinds of crops that fall in those two different categories. Now this might be a no-brainer, but if you have portable plants, like plants that are in pots, I have a lemon tree and a lime tree, and all we needed to do was to take those inside. You can put them in a shed, in the garage, or even on a covered patio in a warm location, and that will protect them. Another very inexpensive way to protect your plants is just by using any transparent container. You can use milk jugs or juice bottles, anything like that. Cut the bottom off and then just place it over the plant. I always put some type of a stick in there because we live in a really windy area and this helps those not to blow away during the cold. Now when I first started doing this years ago, I thought these would be really cool. I drilled holes in the bottom of the pop bottles for ventilation, but then I realized that I couldn't protect these from blowing away, so I tried to twist them down into the soil, but in reality, these just didn't do a good job because they were very easy to tip over or blow over, leaving the plant exposed. Ice cream buckets work really well because they've got this nice wide base. They still need the rock to hold them down, but we just drilled little holes in the top of the ice cream buckets and can place them right over the plant. And I use those ice cream buckets in a method called winter sown, where I start my seedlings and I just put them outside and it'll snow on them and freeze on them and yet those seedlings still sprout and that lets me get a jump start on the garden. To learn more about winter sowing or a poor man's greenhouse, just click on the card in the corner and it will take you to a post that we've written on that subject. One of the cool covers that we discovered last year was these five gallon water cooler jugs. We were able to pick these up free from the local distributor because they could no longer use them and we cut the bottom off of those and those have just been an amazing way to protect those plants. Now I'd just like to point out that you have spinach on one side and Swiss chard on the other side. The tomato in the middle is the only plant that's going to be sensitive to the frost so that's the only plant that needs to be covered. The tomato has grown really large 
and is now touching the edges of that plastic jug, which is not good. I wouldn't leave this on a lot, but it will provide that plant with protection. It's best if it didn't touch it, but that we really just didn't have any other options this late in the game. These jugs are great in the tomato cages because they won't blow away. That provides a barrier and keeps them in place. We also use them in our other garden, but they don't have those cages to hold them. In this case, we've secured them to the cattle panel arch using bungee straps. Here's another shot of the water cooler jugs, and you can see how we use them in the tomato cages. We just use a stake to hold those jugs up when we don't need them in place and easily pull those stakes out and drop them down when we do. This photo was taken about six weeks ago when we had just transplanted the tomatoes out into the garden. At this time, it was fairly routine that we would have cold temperatures at night and would need to drop these jugs down over the tomatoes to protect them. We had put all of this stuff away before this frost hit because we thought we were in the clear. I have a plethora of nursery pots that I use in all different applications, and this is one of my favorite applications. You can just turn that nursery pot upside down over the plant. Again, I have to put a rock to hold it in place. The nursery pots do a great job of protecting the plants from frost. Sam came up with an ingenious way to secure these pots to the trellis. He just took some baling twine and secured about five of them at a time, and they stayed in place just fine. Uncle George has used this method of frost protection for years for his tomatoes and it has worked really well for him. Hot caps are another option. You can pick them up at a local nursery and they also need to be secured down. In this case, these are Grandpa Paul's and he secured them down with bricks. We had covered everything and I was all out of pots and I realized that I had one more place where I had planted these tomato seedlings and I didn't have a way to protect them. We solved that problem by putting a few additional stakes in the ground and draping a thick flannel sheet over the top. Now, the reason why we have fencing there is because it just happened to be handy and it would hold it down. You can hold it down with anything. You don't have to have fencing. The ceramic pots are ideal. They're nice and heavy. They won't blow away. They provide some thermal mass and there is a hole in the top to make sure that the plants have ventilation. And the same thing with the terracotta clay pots. The thing I like better about the clay pot is that they are stackable and so it's really easy to put them away if they don't take up much space. Somebody had thrown out a bunch of these pots and we collected them. They work really well over the squash plants because the squash has already started to spread and it's hard to fit it inside of a regular pot without damaging the leaves, but these fit really nicely over the top. Plastic sheeting or visqueen needs to be used correctly in order for it to protect the plants. It can't touch the leaves or it will do a lot of damage. This bed is actually a potted seedling bed and the plants that are under here are actually potted. What I would do is at night I would just cover it, then I'd take off those four clips and open it up all day long so it could get sunshine and exposed to the air, and then at night I just flip that visqueen back over and clip it in place. This is a really cool design from our friend Beth Listico. In fact, we are planning to implement this on some of the new garden beds that we will be building this year. It's a very inexpensive A-frame design that can go over any existing garden bed. The bed is covered with poly sheeting or plastic sheeting, and when the weather is good, you just lift up that plastic sheeting and the plants can grow and be warm and be happy. But when there's a danger of frost, it's simple to close it and protect your plants. And for those of you that have limited space, this design can be applied on a little patio garden bed too. Click the card in the corner to learn how to make the A-frame greenhouse that Beth designed. Jonathan and I are taking the Food Gardener's Workshop from Tom Bartels, and in his class he has a module on season extension. Tom uses low tunnels to protect his crops from frost. Click the card in the corner to find out more about Tom Bartell's biointensive gardening methods. Last fall, we weren't ready to give up our garden when the first frost was forecast. We quickly put a large tarp over our cattle panel arches to protect our mature plants. This is one row of our garden that had both tomato plants in cages as well as plants in between, and all of those were sensitive to frost. The best way we could come up with to protect these plants was to use plastic and tarps over these tomato cages and secure them down with rocks, uh, chunks of concrete, and boards to protect that whole row. And this was the morning after the frost, and you can see that everything in there is happy. There's my tomatoes and my squash plants, 
And they're mixed with cold weather crops too, like the peas and the beets that didn't have to be protected, but because they're all there together, they all got a nice toasty warm evening. The bottom line is that we need to be prepared to cover our crops and protect them from these killer frosts. This can usually be done fairly inexpensively and by repurposing things that you already have, but you have to think this through and have a plan so that you can do it quickly. It may seem like a small thing, but when your garden bounty depends on it, you need to be prepared. We invite you to check out the post associated with this video, Hot Ideas for Protecting Your Plants from Late Spring Frosts. We also invite you to check out the video, Prepper Survival Garden. In this video, we show you important things that you need to know when you're growing food that your family needs to survive. When your survival depends on it, you need to understand these basic skills. And this video does a great job of outlining it. And earlier in the video, you got to see Beth's inexpensive patio greenhouse. In this video, we show you exactly how to build that and how to use it. Check them out. All it takes is one night of freezing temperatures to wipe out your sensitive crops. When you're depending on that garden to take care of your family, it is so important that you find the ways to protect against that threat. We hope we have provided you with a few good ideas. And now for the question of the day. What ideas do you have for protecting your crops from frost? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.